Good morning again. We're going to get started now, and uh, I'd like to welcome everybody to our uh, to our webinar. This was put together kind of uh, hastily uh, about a week and a half ago, as we were getting a lot of requests from uh, from schools all around uh, the tri-state area looking for quick solutions to help their students who are now distance learning or learning from home or learning wherever they can. Um, so we'd like to welcome you all uh, this morning. Uh, very briefly, uh, we're going to try to keep this kind of short. Uh, there will be uh, some time for questions. Perhaps it'll be easiest if you uh, have a question, you type it in the little chat bubble you see in the GoToMeeting uh, box on your screen. Uh, I'll be monitoring those as our presenter is talking, and uh, we can answer all the questions that we can at the end. Uh, if there's not too many people, we might be able to unmute ourselves and actually ask the questions live. Um, again, I apologize if anybody's having any difficulty with the GoToMeeting uh, software. This is the program that we usually use for our own company meetings and uh, not really designed for broadcasting webinars, but uh, we appreciate you bearing with us. But to get started, I'll, I'll uh, remind everyone, please stay on mute if you can. Uh, again, the, the questions in the in the chat bubble will be the easiest way to, to communicate with us. Uh, I'm Ned Sheeran. I'm with Allegheny Educational Systems. Uh, some of you know us because you're customers of ours. We've been providing career and technical education solutions to schools for over 40 years now in Pennsylvania, also in New York and New Jersey. Um, and for 30 of those years, we've been partnering with uh, LJ Create. Uh, LJ got their start in electricity, electronics training, uh, automotive training, and in the last several decades, science and STEM curriculum and uh, uh, online learning and hands-on learning. Uh, today, specifically, we're going to be uh, Myself, I'm going to ask Mark to uh, to take over and, and uh, give us a presentation and a demonstration, please. Thank you, Ned. Appreciate that, and uh, good morning to all. Thank you for being here with us. And I'm going to keep this short and just give you a very high uh, level overview of the type of resources or solutions that we have that may be of value to you uh, during this time or even uh, as we look down the road. So with that, let's take a look at what we have. Um, first, give you just a, a brief introduction about the company, uh, who we are. Um, we're an international STEM resource provider since 1979. We have over 100 employees in product development and client services. And we have representatives working around the world. We're con currently in 67 different countries around the world, providing some of our different uh, STEM solutions. Our objectives are to engage all learners in hands-on learning for STEM. Um, and this is the key to what we've always done. So when we look at the materials that we're going to show you, I want you to keep in mind that our normal uh, modality would be we would set up a program for a specific topical area, subject area, a career area, and we would give the option for people to use our online materials in multiple ways, but we've also mixed in hands-on applications using bespoke pieces of hardware that go along with the e-learning materials. So as we go through the licenses, I'll show you how we could make a value out of our content without having the access to the hands-on component. We also like to help equip the STEM workforce and help bridge the widening skill gap, and then to pioneer new techniques and innovation for learning. We've been providing online uh, learning now for well over 15 years.
school uh, STEM units or uh, and science units. And again, we'll break it down by the numbers for you. And then we have our living with STEM, which is our elementary um, science and STEM uh, libraries. Within our libraries or within the license that you buy, they're actually broken down into three separate components. So with each license, you will have access to courses. And these are lessons that have been organized uh, by learning standards. Uh, so for instance, in working with STEM, one of the courses that may be available would be to automotive um, addressing the ASE uh, task areas. Um, so you have a, a number of different courses that have been put together. You also have a search facility where you can go in and actually search for a lesson uh, by using our filtering application. And basically you can search and pick up individual learning units, whether it's theory, uh, maybe you just wanna create a test, uh, maybe you just wanna use the um, investigation portion of it. And you can customize and build your own courses out of our total library. And that's the third component over here that you see. And these are lessons organized into topics. If you think about it, it's like a, a library and each one of them is a topical area, is a book. Within the book, you have a number of pages, which are the individual learning units for those topics. So you would get a license, you have access to some pre-built courses, you can actually search and create and manipulate your own courses out of our complete library. If we take a look at the individual libraries themselves, which we can do, you will see starting with our elementary, we have over 1100 individual learning units and some of the courses that are associated uh, within there are elementary science tied to the next generation science standards, grade three to five mathematics, uh, to the national standards. And then we also have some career exploration uh, challenges. If we look at the topical areas of the subjects of this license, you're gonna see it's mainly science. We do have some technology and engineering, some mathematics, and then the English language arts. And each of those subject areas are broken down by their actual learning units. So if you look at science, for instance, you see there's a total of 784 individual learning units covering the science for elementary. And they are broken down into 210 presentations, which are your theory uh, for the lessons, 210 investigations. Investigations are used to have the students apply what they just learned in that theory presentation. We also have 68 hands-on activities, which in this case uh, of e-learning, you wouldn't be utilizing them at this point. Um, you would be replacing those with the 210 investigations. And then 296 assessments. So every single learning unit has its own individual assessment. And that is all gonna be tracked and managed on our learning management system. If we come back and we look at the middle school and the high school, you'll see Exploring STEM has over 4,200 individual learning units covering middle school and high school science, and that's related to the next generation science standards. We have STEM middle school and high school programs. Predominantly, this is where we use our, pro, our course called Design and Technology, which is a careers pathways uh, course. We also provide English language arts as a support to these topical areas. Mathematics, which, which is your engineering mathematics, which again is in support of these areas. Basic information technology and employability skills. And again, you can see by the numbers, um, middle school STEM, for instance, there's well over a thousand learning units. There are 192 hands-on activities sprinkled within the different courses, but there are also 252 investigations that could be used during these times in lieu of those hands-on activities. And then our working with STEM, here we have over 6,400 units. And again, these are covering more of your uh, career and technical engineering 
type of uh, subject matter. So we have automotive engineering, electrical and electronics engineering, mechanical engineering, business skills, freight logistics, workplace problem solving, engineering mathematics, and your English language arts skills. Again, all wrapped up into those three areas that I mentioned earlier. Here we have courses related to automotive, the ASE, uh, electronics, we have um, programs correlated to the ETA certifications. And then for engineering, mechatronics, and manufacturing, we can address RECF certification, which is a pre-engineering certification. We also have an MSSC CPT prep course that could be utilized all through um, by using the internet. Um, one of the things that's interesting too that I should note here is within these libraries, if you buy a working with STEM library, above and beyond what you get from the working with STEM library, you also get its lower level library as part of that, which can then be used uh, by other subject matter teachers within a building. It can become a shared resource, and it can also be for remediation uh, that students may need to reference something they should have learned previously at a previous grade level. So within each of the licenses, you do get the license below it as far as the libraries themselves, not the courses. The contents are broken down into lessons. And here on this screen, I'm showing you what a course might look like. And we'll get into this live in a few moments. But basically, the way our lessons will work is you'll have a topic and then you'll have a learning unit. Uh, for instance, simple machines. And then you'll notice next to simple machines, there's a series of icons. And then underneath it, you see simple machine task with another set of icons. What the icons represent are the way the delivery of the material is done. So the first icon you see here, which looks like a screen, is the presentation. It's here where the students will get the theory relative to the investigation and the assessment. So we break the theory down into very small, short, sharp bits of information on a screen with a voiceover. Um, and then some sort of a graphic, an animation, an interactive animation, a schematic or something as the students are reading the screens or having the screens read back to them. Um, they're seeing a visual of what they've just learned. And most of the presentations are very short. They're 15 to 20 minutes long, 20 screens. And then from here, they will go on to the next icon, which is the investigation, which is the magnifying glass. The investigation is going to have the students take the theory that they've just learned and apply it. And they get to apply that in a number of different ways. We have virtual labs. We have simulated activities using simulators. Uh, like in this particular one, it uses a virtual, a virtual electronics simulator where they'll build circuits and test circuits. Um, it could have an interactive application or an interactive explorer, but it's going to use something that's going to engage the student in a way that they can prove that they understood what they just learned in that presentation. Once they finish the investigation, we then give them a very short assessment of that learning unit, which is usually going to be five or six questions. As soon as they respond and they hand it in, they'll get a short report. They'll see what they got right and what they got wrong, and it's automatically graded for you. You don't have to do the grading yourself. It's already graded, and we'll show you how you can track those grades in a few moments. Once a student has finished the lesson, there may be a practical activity relating to that lesson that will point the students to a piece of equipment that they might have in their particular program. And then we have them go through an actual hands-on application of what they just did in the previous lessons. And then, of course, we will also then give them a practical assessment on that hands-on task. Also integrated into that is support lessons to support the topic of the topical area that they're learning on. And this is, this is in a course. 
And the support material is usually going to be your math, science, English language arts, or it could be things like if you're working in automotive or electronics or engineering, it could be, you know, how do you take electrical measurements? Um, how do you take uh, measurements using uh, micrometers? So we put supporting materials in there so the students have everything that they need in order to become successful in using the materials. The Everything is, is housed and held and delivered on our Class Act II LMS. That's our learning management system. Um, and this provides the teacher and your administrators with student performance tracking and reporting features. There's a number of different type of reports that you can actually run. Uh, you can keep track of your students, uh, time on task, their actual grades, uh, what they've worked on, what they haven't worked on. Um, you can uh, see who's on and who's working as they're actually working on the materials. And this is all done based around that learning management system. And when you buy a license, that management system is part of that license. Your school will get their own allocated domain, which will give you the, um, the actual name of your school. And this allows you to have complete control over the dedicated LMS, providing the flexibility to create an organization structure that matches your specific needs. So in summary, you have about 11,000 plus learning units organized into three content libraries, living with STEM, exploring STEM, working with STEM. Everything has a wide range of content activities and uh, pricing is based on a subscription model, which uh, Ned will get into when we finish. I'm going to jump in now, and I'm going to switch over to the learning management system for a moment, and I'm going to walk through um, the types of material that are available. So I'm logging in live onto my particular uh, LMS, and I'm coming over here, and I'm going to click on View Courses. And because I'm in as an admin, I have access to everything that is on my site. Um, as you can see, I can scroll through here and all the courses and all the libraries are all listed on here. But I'm going to take a look at the one that we actually have up at the moment, which is from our automotive. This is part of our course um, automotive. And this is um, electrical and electronic systems. Uh, for MLR 2017 standards. And you'll see that there are two sides of the screen here because this is a course. Um, on the left side of the screen are the individual learning units. And then on the right side of the screens are the integrated set of standards, uh, any of the supporting work, and also any of the teacher resources um, that we make available for the units. All of our pre-built courses will all start with a pre-test and end with a post-test. And as we work through them, you see, just as I mentioned before, we will start with a topical area. So electrical fundamentals, simple circuits, starts off with a simple PowerPoint that will deliver a simple set of instructions for the students or theory content, if you would. And you basically are just going to work through this. And yes, we do have a couple of questions after a number of screens. We are not assessing the students here. This was meant to be used um, if a teacher is delivering this as a whole class instruction. It gives you a break point to know whether you should continue on or do you need to back up into the presentation because the students didn't understand what you were actually talking about. Uh, basically, you'll see it's uh, Short, sharp bits of information. This one is just using some basic graphics, nothing too um, heavy here at all. And basically, um, I can jump to the last screen so I don't have to bore you to death. Uh, it'll end with a summary explaining what the students have done uh, or what they should have learned. You click return to course, and now you bring up your investigation for this, which can be done online. And in this case, it does use the virtual circuit trainer. 
And the students will use this virtual circuit trainer to actually build a circuit based off of what we're telling them to do. And in this particular case, I'm just going to take a quick little bulb and run my wires. And of course, one of the nice things about this too is um, for those that are using this simulator, it's really great when you can start to show the students from a graphical uh, point of view and then quickly switch over to a schematic so that they can start learning how to read diagrams and schematics from here. I can take my multimeter out, I click operate, and I click and lo and behold, the bulb lights up. I can take my meter and here we go. There's my 12 volts. So they'll use this particular simulator in a number of different activities. Uh, basically, they'll build different circuits and then they'll be asked to do certain things. In this case, what reading does the multimeter display? Uh, because I'm in as a teacher, we also provide for the teachers the, the answer keys for every single learning unit so that you know what is expected of the students as they work through those typical activities. The student finishes the activity. Now they take their short assessment. And again, it's just going to be a couple of questions. As you can see, I answered this one already. Um, click on short report. It will automatically tell the student the grade. Nice try. Try again. It's automatically graded for you on the system. Uh, as a teacher, you can go and un unlock it from the student so that the student can take it again, and the system will keep track of how many attempts the student took to get a passing grade, if that's how you want to use it. And then as you see here, as I said earlier, uh, here is a particular simple circuit um, hands-on activity uh, that will bring the, um, the students to a page that says, if you have this equipment, here is a hands-on task that you can do using a real piece of equipment. If you don't have the piece of equipment, you would just move on to the next lesson showing theory, presentation, and, and assessments. If you notice also, as I was working through this, because this is a, a course that's integrated to the NATEF standards, as I click on a, a topic, it filtered out for me the, the actual standards that are being addressed within that, that offering. I can also click on an individual learning unit. It'll filter it down further, or I can click on the objective, and it'll filter out the learning units that are being addressed uh, with that. And that's how courses are laid out. Now, if I wanted to look for a library item, uh, since I'm in working with STEM, I would type in LIB3, and now LIB3 will show me all of the individual uh, lesson topics that are available as, uh, as part of a library. So, for instance, these are not courses, Fluid Power. If I open up Fluid Power, now this is a, a library book. It's just going to give you um, the fluid power topic, and then these are all the lessons that are available under that topical area that you can make use of. So you can either teach it out of a library itself, and it works the same way. Um, I'm going to have a presentation, as we did before. Okay. Once I finish the presentation, I come back over and I'll use the um, investigation. In this particular case, the investigation is using our hydraulic simulator, where all the students would have access to a simulator that simulates our piece of equipment, actually, that they'll be able to bring up and actually build um, circuits with. They can create the different cylinders, and actually then they'll just uh, actually build a function, build an actual quick circuit, and so on and so forth. So that's another, uh, another area. So with that, you have courses, you have libraries, you have, um, again, you'll have both libraries um, 
in this particular case, because I'm in working with STEM, you'll have Library 3 and Library 2, which is your, um, your middle school and high school library. And that's basically the way our learning units are put together. Um, I don't really Mark, have that much more you? to show. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Uh, I'm monitoring questions as we go. We've got uh, several people who are interested specifically in the uh, exploring STEM engineering and design. Uh, mm -hmm. And questions are, uh, is there any narration? I, I know you're going quickly. Yes. It looks like you've got narration turned off. So perhaps you could turn the narration on. And then the other question was, uh, when the students are using these uh, virtual simulators, uh, there, there's a tutorial that shows them how to use the Correct. simulator before they do it. So can you do a presentation with the narration turned on, just a, yes. a quick one, and also yep. uh, show the tutorial for the hands-on? OK. So basically, um, I'm going to bring up, and this one is pretty apropos for this. This is from our design and technology. It's biomedical tech. And I'll bring up the presentation here. And um, I'll turn on the voiceover, which is an option that you can turn it on or you can switch it off. Investigate how the disposal of medical products helps to protect people from harmful organisms. Are you able to hear that, Ned? Yeah, we can hear it. Humans get sick from time to time as a result of infection. So as you work through the presentation, technology on public health has been through prevention of disease and not so much the so you can turn on the um the voice for the investigations you can turn them on and off and also um oops that's not where i want to go i'm trying i'm going to go to one that i know has a uh simulator so that i can show you how that works so let me go back to mlr and I'll go back to that electrical simulator that we just showed you for simple circuits. Within the simulator itself, <laughs> or any of the simulators, you're gonna notice that across the top, there's a help, there's a user guide that will walk the students through anything that they need to know about how to use the simulator. And actually, this is part of the um, pedagogy for of how we're trying to teach the students because we're we no longer want to give them the answers we want to tell them and show them where they can find the answers but they have to use their skills to be able to do the research to find the answers so we do make it all available um, how to open up and save a new one types of components um, and they can basically work through this on their own and it, it, it's pretty intuitive as they start to do it it gets pretty um, easy to figure out how to use the simulator. But each of the simulators do have and will come with a um, STEM applications, um, anything that a student needs to do anything is built into the learning lessons. Um, for instance, if they're going to do STEM design and technology and maybe it has them doing something with programming, uh, let's say programming of a robot, um, the students will have access to um, the information within the actual hands-on activities. So let's say they were going to do a task, a task here, and you had the actual um, piece of equipment. 
I'm looking for one that's going to use the programming guide so I can show you. Uh, let's take robotics. Might be easier. Industrial robotics, machine tools. Let's take industrial robotics. <coughs> Mobile robotics. So here, in like in mobile robotics, if they have to program the robot or to use a sensor, we built in, into the lesson controller help sheet. So if they forget how to use the controller, they all they have to do is bring this up. Oh, I forgot how to power up the controller. Okay, click on it, and we'll show them how to power it up, how to download programs to the controller. So everything that a student needs to do is listed right here. How do I test the motor? So all the instructions are here for the students, how to use the VJC software uh, for programming. The help sheet is here. How do I uh, save uh, flowchart programs? How do I do block programs? And basically, we give them the information that would be required so they can do the work on their own. One other question yeah. about uh, teacher uh, teacher help, teacher training. Uh, when when a school uh, buys a new LMS and e-learning site from LJ Create, uh, LJ works with them to get the site set up and also with the teacher to help them understand how to set up a class and to navigate the curriculum. Are right. there other resources that LJ has available sort of uh, uh, online resources that a yes. teacher can refer to if they need quick answers? Yes. Well, uh, to that point, we will we will help you set up your site, uh, enter classes, show you how to enter students, and get you started and show you the appropriate content for whatever your program is. On the LMS itself, on the very top here, you see it says help. If you click on that button, there's always a guide for the LMS that's always available to the teachers at any time that breaks down basically anything you need to do. Um, if I want to, uh, how do I access lessons from my engineering construction kit in Eric? If I click on that, it'll bring you right to the page and it'll give you step-by-step -step instructions. So that's always available uh, for learning how to use the LMS. The other thing is if you're in a STEM design course, which is one of our full courses, we also make available um, for the teachers teacher resources. And that is a complete set of organization notes and lesson plans for each of the learning units. So for instance, I'm in STEM design and technology, mobile robotics. Here are all the lesson plans that a teacher can bring up at any time they want and look at, well, what are they doing in this lesson? Oh, it's a 60 minute activity. There's an introduction. Here are the objectives, recommended equipment, vocabulary, the plan of what they're going to do. There's a pre-test, introduction to the, the, the activities, and then typical results. So within the, re, within the design and technology course, we actually do give you lesson plans, organization notes, and most importantly, there's a complete program guide that can be downloaded that cover all of these topical areas because this is all the programs, the 18 areas of design and technology. And in one program guide, you have access to information on how to sequence, how to set up your class. Um, you may want to know what equipment is needed in advance. So this guide is available for you. And let me just scroll down. Basically, it breaks down project-based learning, how we want to put the students in groups. It basically breaks down the content, how it is going to be used. Breaks down the, um, just like I did before, presentation, investigation, and practical tasks. And then it'll actually go down and actually breaks down for you uh, the course overviews. It shows you the, the course and then the equipment that would be required to do the hands-on. Then we give you examples of sequences of how you can run your program. And then there's all of the teacher notes, lesson guides, and lesson plans are built right in here so that a teacher can have access 
to every single course and every single lesson plan. And this is really done mainly in our elementary and our middle school and high school design and technology courses. So yes, the answer to the question, there is plenty of online help and we're only a phone call away uh, from supporting you individually. Thanks, Mark. Uh, You're we're welcome. running long on our allotted time, okay. so uh, I'm going to quickly run over to uh, here. Uh, we've been answering questions as we go. Uh, the one question that we, I'm sure, have is the uh, is on pricing. So we have a, a special pricing page that was put together uh, specifically for the last two or three months of the semester based on when schools are going to be closing up uh, for this semester. And there's the pricing of the Living with STEM uh, two-month and three-month license, uh, exploring STEM middle and high school two and three months, as well as working with STEM career tech and colleges two and three-month li uh, licenses. And uh, and I'll mention, as as Mark said, if you uh, if you get the Exploring STEM Middle and High School uh, license, in addition to all the content and courses that are set up for Exploring STEM, you also get the online content library with the uh, with the library below that, which would be the Living with STEM, and that's the differential in, in the price. Uh, and and you also get the learning management system and access to their customer service and customer support. Uh, part of that price is going to be. LJ actually setting up your individual domain, your school branded site, and helping you as the instructor or the administrator get up and running and started. Um, so those are uh, those are the special pricing for the end of the year for the COVID impacted uh, schools. I know we've gone quickly today, especially with answering questions. If you have other questions, you can uh, ask Mark or me via email. Um, these are our email addresses. Uh, you also will receive a, a copy of the recording for today's webinar in an email. Anybody who registered prior to today uh, is going to be receiving an email from me, and it'll contain a link to the recording. And you can simply reply to that email that you get uh, if you have additional questions or you need help. As far as ordering goes, we do take purchase orders. We also do credit card orders over the phone. Uh, if you're in an urgent situation where you really need to get up and running, we can actually get things going before you've gotten your purchase order out. You just let us know that it's in the works and we can help you out with that. So um, we're here to help and I'm hoping that we can be helpful. As I mentioned, I'm monitoring questions in the in the chat. Uh, Mark, could you tell us a little bit of what the typical prices are for a full year if somebody wanted to start up uh, in the fall and use the... Uh, uh, middle School Exploring STEM uh, e-learning library? Yeah, sure. The middle school li uh, license is $4,500 for a full year, and then it has a $3,000 a year annual renewal. That is for unlimited users within your building. Um, and the reason I mention that is because, again, look at this as being a possibility of a shared resource, not just for one program, but you may have science teachers in the building that could use the science materials to supplement what they're doing. You can have other teachers in other courses use different pieces of materials to supplement what they're doing. So it's a, it's a shared resource, and sometimes that makes it look a little bit better. Now, if you purchase one of these temporary licenses um, to get you through the end of the year, and you see a value in going further, and getting a full year license, we will work with you to deduct what you paid for your two or three month license off of the front end of a full year license as a way of, of a courtesy. So you could actually save yourself, um, I think it's uh, $750 off of the 4,500 if you had the two month license uh, during the COVID-19 temporary license period. And just uh, one last question. Uh, the uh, one year elementary license is how much? Um, off the top of my head, I believe the elementary is 3,000 with a 2,000 
uh, annual renewal. And again, we do the same thing for anybody interested in elementary or any of the licenses for that matter. Great. And the last thing I'll mention is you, you're talking about anyone else in the building. These are actually campus licenses. So if a career tech center has two or three buildings in its campus, uh, it's a shared resource on their campus wide server for um, multiple buildings, but it's really a school license. Isn't that right? Yes, correct. Correct. Great. But we th we have many, we have many people even in a career center that you may have nine to 12 different programs that can make use of specific content from within it. So it really does break it down and make it quite affordable because the more you have using it, obviously the cheaper it becomes. Great. I think we got all the questions. Again, if there are any other questions, please feel free to email Mark or Ned uh, or just reply to the email that you get with the recording that's going to come out later today. And thank you again all for uh, attending and Mark, thank you for presenting. Thank you, Ned, and thank you for everybody for showing up today. I appreciate it. Bye-bye. Goodbye.